to turn with me to the book of the prophet Obadiah this morning. We're turning to the book of the prophet Obadiah. It's between the book of Psalms and the end of your Old Testament, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, and then we come to the book of the prophet Obadiah. Obadiah, and we're beginning to read at verse 1. The prophecy of Obadiah begins this morning with the vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen, thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. If, these, if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How were the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shall, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day uh, of thy brother in the day of thy, of, when he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid thine hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee, thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And amen. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. In life, child of God, in life, there will always be conflicts. In life, there are conflicts at every hand. There are conflicts that we all can escape from. 
There are conflicts some of us we can't escape from. Fortunately, child of God, there are conflicts that we can avoid. But unfortunately, there are conflicts that we all must face. Conflicts of all kinds. I, for one this morning, hate conflict of any kind. All Christians, all Christians, every child of God should hate conflict. God hates conflict. And God, through the mighty Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12 and verse 18 says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And child of God, we, the people of God, as much as lieth in us this morning, should learn to live peaceably with all men. God hates conflict. Friend, Christ hates conflict. Do you remember what he said in Mark 9, verse 50? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. And yet so many, so many delight in conflicts. So many delight in contentions. And sad to say, sad to say, some of them people are professing Christians. Do you get that? Sadly, some of them are professing Christians. People forget that conflicts bring division and they cause destruction. God knows this morning, God knows within His own heart how many of churches have been split and divided and destroyed over conflict. And God's name being dishonored and God's name being disgraced through it all. Our communities, our workplaces, a thousand and one different ways conflicts come. But God this morning wants to speak to us about one type of conflict that I would say could be the most difficultest of conflicts to resolve. God wants to speak to us this morning perhaps on one of the most painful conflicts anyone could ever be in. And that's the conflict this morning of a family feud. A family feud is a very painful conflict indeed. I wonder this morning is, is there someone here and this message is for you? If you read through the book of Obadiah, you read through the 21 verses a number of times, you'll find that the book of Obadiah is a tale of two brothers. It's all about two brethren, two brothers who knew nothing, only conflict all their life. Jacob and Esau. If there ever was a family that had a family feud, it was this one. Jacob and Esau weren't at each other's throats since they were born. They were even at each other's throats before they were born. You didn't think you could be fighting before you were, before you were born. Do you know, friend, this morning, child of God, you can sin before you're born. 
Do you remember in John's Gospel, chapter 9, do you remember the disciples came to the Lord Jesus one day and they asked him, Master, they saw a man who was born blind. They said, Master, who did sin here? This man or his parents that he was born blind? You know, the disciples were more or less blaming that sin had taken place that this man was born blind. And they were more or less saying to the Lord, did this man sin before he was born, that he was born blind? And you know, the Lord Jesus didn't check them for the question. This is how he answered. Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents that he was born blind. But you know, we come this morning to twins and who sinned before they were born. Even in the very womb, they quarreled and they wrestled. So the family feud here this morning began before they were even born. But when we come to Genesis chapter 25 this morning in verse 28, you know there's a very sad, very sad sight there. It says there that Isaac loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. I want to pause just for a wee moment. Sometimes parents are the cause of family feuds. And a wee word now for us parents. It's a dangerous thing to make difference in your children. Isaac, he loved Esau. But Rebecca, she loved Jacob. And as a result of these parents showing favoritism, only added fuel to the fire. God wants to speak to us this morning of the curse, the curse, the curse of conflict. God wants to speak to us this morning from Obadiah verse 10, and He speaks to Edom, who was the descendants of Esau. Listen to what God says to Edom, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. God hates conflict, and God will answer conflict. First of all, God addresses God addresses Esau's violence so vicious. Esau's violence so vicious. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Do you ever hear the old saying, child of God? Do you ever hear the old saying, it only takes one tiny spark to start a blazing inferno. It only takes one tiny spark to start a blazing inferno. Jacob and Esau, their feud not only stayed within a family feud, it spilled over into a feud of two nations. A tiny spark can, can start a blazing inferno. As far as Jacob and Esau was this morning, child of God, brotherly love certainly wasn't their story. Where did it all begin? Well, it all began where feuds always begin. 
careless canality breeds jealousy. Careless canality breeds pride. Careless canality breeds greed. Pause for a moment. Does careless canality that produces jealousy, careless carnality that produces pride, careless carnality that, that uh, produces greed. Can I ask us all a wee question this morning as God challenges my heart? Do we possess such? Do we possess such this morning? Listen, child of God, we're all only human. But we've got to be honest. Is there pride this morning? Is there jealousy this morning? Listen, is there greed this morning in our hearts this morning that may drive us into conflict with others? I wonder, is God this morning putting the spotlight upon the problem with your heart? Is He putting the spotlight upon the problem in my heart? And here in the book of Obadiah this morning, the tale is told. The story is being shared of a long-standing family feud. God addresses Edom. Edom this morning was the descendants of Esau. It all begins with Esau. Somebody said that Jacob was the biggest twister and the biggest uh, crookedest article in the Old Testament. Remember Bertie Johnson saying to me one time, he says, George, Jacob could never pull his socks on. He was that crooked, he had to screw them on. But before we slam Jacob, <coughs> and before we feel sorry for Esau, let's get the honest picture. Do you know what God said? God said, Jacob, whom I have loved, but Esau I have hated. How could God love the schemer and hate the cheated? Let's put the color into the picture this morning and let's see these two brothers. Before we condemn Jacob, and before we feel sympathizers for Esau, let's just learn where it all begins. You know, friends, Esau, he was a liar. Dirty, filthy, rotten liar. He comes in from the field one day. And as he comes in from the field one day, he starts putting on this sorrowful story. He sees uh, Jacob with the red pottage. He says, I'm faint. I'm at the point of death. I'm at the point of death, Jacob. Give me the red pottage. He said, what, <coughs> what right or what good is this birthright to me? I can tell you something now, child of God. We talk about Jacob being deceitful. There was none more deceitful than Esau. Esau says, I'm at the point of death, Jacob. I'm at the point of death. He wasn't at the point of death at all. Esau was painting a big self-pity picture. And Esau was coming out of the sad soap story. In other words, to get a cheap bowl of pottage. And in the light of the pottage, he said, what shall this birthday do to me? You know, Jacob this morning, Jacob, as he looked at the birthright, he valued the birthright. He valued it, and he desired it. But Esau, he violated it, and he despised it. Esau, Esau done, done something that Jacob didn't do. 
Esau went. In chapter 26 of Genesis, he disobeyed the law of God, and he went and married two pagan women, which the Scripture says was a grief of mind unto Isaac. Then in chapter 27, we see there poor Esau. Well, we have it in our heads. Poor Esau, him cheated out of the blessing. Well, perhaps that's what happened. But don't blame Jacob. You blame his mother. Don't forget that. You blame his mother. And you remember what happened on that day. It was Rebekah that planned it, and it was Rebekah that told Jacob what to do in it all. It was his mother. Listen, mothers, and listen, fathers, and listen to me. No matter what child you have, even though they may be rebellious, and even though, child of God, they may not turn out the way you want them to be, listen, don't you show favoritism because they're still your child. They're still your child. I've seen it all too often. I'm telling you this morning, child of God, we as parents take note. The way we walk leaves a deep and lasting footprint upon their lives. The way we walk, child of God, leaves a deep and lasting footprint upon the character of their lives. Esau's violence that was so vicious. And in verse 41 of Genesis 20 says, verse 41 of Genesis 27 it says, And Esau hated Jacob, and Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. And Esau bides his time. Do you know someone, child of God? Listen to me. There's nothing more vicious than hidden hatred within the heart. How many brothers are at each other's throat today over land? Over a farm, maybe. Over a well. Boys, how many has at each other's throats over a well? And because the parents showed favoritism over this and over that, listen, a wee word, maybe the Lord has this for somebody this morning. If you're considering of making a will, for goodness sake, do it right. Do it right. And do it fairly. I don't know who the Lord's addressing here. I'm just saying what the Lord's telling me to say. Do it right. Maybe I'm, maybe not me, maybe God this morning is speaking to somebody and someone has wronged you. And your heart's bitter because of what they've done. Remember this child of God. Remember this, conflict will always bring division. Twenty-one years later in Genesis chapter 33, after twenty-one years, Jacob and Esau come together, they meet. 
It says Esau ran and fell upon Jacob's neck and, they, and he kissed him and he hugged him and all the rest of it. But listen, child of God, that wasn't reconciliation. That was just a truce. That was just a truce. There was never confession. There was never repentance. Oh, there was hugs and there was kisses, but sometimes sweet lips hide a bitter heart. If there was genuine repentance on this occasion, if there was genuine confession, listen, the whole thing would have stopped that day. Ah, but no. Esau went on to tell his children, and the whole thing snowballed out of control. Do you know something this morning, child of God? Proverbs 18, verse 19 is right. It says, you know what it says? A brother offended. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. Is harder to be won than a strong city. Esau's violence so vicious. Esau's shroud that was so shameful. Because God had to set him for thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Shame shall cover thee. An old commentator says, if thy brother wrongs thee, Remember not so much his wrongdoing. I'll repeat that. If thy brother offends thee, remember not so much his wrongdoing, just remember he still is your brother. Look at verse 11. God had to address the shameful acts of Esau or Edom, in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captives his forces, and foreigners entered into the gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast, wast, wast one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, in the day that he became a stranger, neither should thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of his distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. How could one do this to a brother? Oh, it happens all the time. And listen, child of God, make sure you don't let it happen. God is showing Edom his wickedness and his wrongdoing, and he said, shame shall cover thee. Is there anybody here this morning? And God, not me, not me, God is asking you to settle some quarrel. Is there someone here this morning? And God, God is asking you to settle some conflict. Because if you don't, see if you don't, mark my words better still than mark God's word, shame shall cover thee. Tracy and I know a man many years ago, many years ago, him and the father was at conflict over, listen to this, over a lack of pigeons. Over a lack of pigeons. And one could have been as thick as the other, if you know what I'm talking, coming about. One Saturday, 
The father landed on the street, and we think perhaps he came to try and sort it out. The son, stubborn as a mule, saw the father drive into the street, and he went in and he closed the door. And the father turned the car and went away again. Did indeed. A couple of hours had passed since that. And the police landed on the door. I think it was the police. To inform him that his father had died in the car of a heart attack on the way home. The Word of God is right, friend. The Word of God is right. Listen to me. Ephesians 4 and verse 26. Listen to this. Be ye angry and sin not, and neither let the sun go down upon your wrath. That man, on the day of his dad's funeral, said, if he would only open his eyes just for me to say sorry. It is an honor, the Bible says, it is an honor for a man to cease from strife. But every fool, every fool would be meddling. Hatred, Proverbs 10 and 12 says, stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sin. General MacArthur said, a truce, a truce just says, don't shoot for a while. But peace comes when the truth is known. The issue is settled, and parties embrace each other. Ah, no. Esau showed no compassion to Jacob. He rejoiced at Jerusalem's downfall. What a shame to cover any man. Esau's violence that was so vicious, Esau's shroud that was so shameful, but God wants to finish with this one. Esau's outcome that was so obvious. Esau's outcome that was so obvious. Thou shall be cut off forever. Whatever the conflict Whatever the feud, you remember this, God will have the final say in all matters. God will vindicate the righteous in his own way and in his own time. Verse 15, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done, listen to this, it shall be done unto thee. I don't know who it is. 
God doesn't give me a message like this for the fun of it. But whoever it is, whatever grievance, whatever conflict, whatever circumstance or family feud of any kind you're involved in, get it settled and get it settled now. All that Esau done on Jacob returned upon his own head. Remember this child of God, and this is for Christians as well as anybody. This is not just a text for the unsaved, it's for God's people. Do you know what it says? Galatians chapter 4, I think it's verse 7, this is what it says. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Pharaoh planned all the Hebrew children to be cast into the river, to be drowned all the Hebrew males, didn't they? Isn't that what Pharaoh planned and purposed? All the Hebrew males to be cast in, that were born to be cast into the river and drowned? What happened, Pharaoh? God drowned at his armies in the Red Sea. Do you remember the liars? The liars that spoke against Daniel and had Daniel threw into the lion's den. What happened? The ones who lied against Daniel was the ones that ended up in the lion's den and killed. Now listen, child of God, listen to me. The curse of conflict brings division and brings destruction. It does. And child of God, listen, whatever it is, whatever it is, if you have to say sorry to someone, don't just say it. You mean it. And you repent and settle it all. Not just for your good, but do it for God's glory.